What happens when a gardener scourge becomes a forest understory's worst nightmare? Well, you're looking at it here, a complete monoculture of bishop's weed, otherwise known as gout weed, completely taking over this forest floor here, outcompeting native species that we are trying to promote. Let's take a look at what bishop's weed looks like. You can see it's got these really long stems and then these leaves that are divided into three groups of leaflets. Let's take a closer look at what these leaflets look like. You notice that it's got a serrated margin on it, really kind of dentate or almost like looking like uh, your molars or something on the, on the outside of its margins. And you can see that it's connected. These two leaves, uh, leaflets kind of come out opposite and then another one popping out straight. But you can see that's usually kind of comes in three groups. So well, one to my the right of my thumb, left, and then straight above it. They'll, and I also wanted to point out something else. You see all of this stuff in this dirt here that looks like ground beef or ground meat. All of these casings are the result of an invasive worm. And you can see it here. Look at that. That is the snake worm or um, crazy worms as they call it. Look at that's trying to escape from me. Kind of leaves behind these casings uh, on the top. So not only are we dealing with gout weed in this region, but we're also dealing with um, with jumping worms, Asian jumping worms as well. So crazy worms, snake worms, they're all the same thing. But this is gout weed here. And again, you're looking for three groups of three leaflets that are coming out, serrated margins, and this kind of dense network underneath this soil connecting it. It kind of crowds out anything that's trying to grow, even tree seedlings in the area from, from kind of popping up and shooting up as well. Um, in the springtime, you'll notice that it will flower. Uh, the flowers kind of shoot up from the middle of these leaf of, of these different leaflets here, kind of go straight up and almost like create a white flower bloom that looks kind of like Queen's Anne's Lace, which I'll show you in a PowerPoint in a second. But again, forest under, uh, understory species kind of completely blanketing, creating these dense mats where not much else can grow in between it. So bishop's weed, bishop's or bishop's gout weed, we've also heard it called. Um, and actually its genus name means little goat foot. And the reason why they called it that is that these leaflets kind of resemble a little goat foot. So just something else to be thinking about and on the lookout for this month. Let's take a look at some uh, PowerPoint features so you can see the spring features as well. Just a few more words on gout weed before I send you out there to start uh, photographing and reporting. But essentially the reason why it's such a scourge, especially to gardeners, is the way that it reproduces and, and begins to spread. So it mainly kind of takes over an area through vegetative spread and it sends out these horizontal runners that essentially put out shoots at intervals. So imagine like a dense, interconnected system just below the ground and even sometimes above the ground where a lot of these horizontal stems are connected. They put up shoots from the parent plant and you can see it over here, all these different nodes that start putting up and, and establishing roots and, and, and establishing new plants kind of coming from this one parent plant here. You can see it here, you know, why it's so hard to get rid of in a garden or in a natural setting because of this dense interconnection, this sort of network that's happening just below the surface. Um, and again, these three pairs of leaflets here uh, coming out, long petiole or leaf stalk as well. Um, and a lot of the reason why it ended up in natural areas is due to improper waste disposal, garden discards, spreading from nearby estates where it was intentionally planted, and then not thinking about the, how, to, how to discard of it properly, and then getting out to natural areas and taking over the native understory. So again, that's why it's so hard to remove because of these kind of these runners that it sends out from, a, from the parent plant itself. Other things to look uh, at when you're looking at gout weed, just some other images to, to see here. The wild type that I showed you in the video is, is a medium green. So you can see it over here, you know, again, there's, there's three pairs of leaflets coming out three, in three different groups, medium greenish color, but there is a variegated form, meaning these white splotches that are found on the outside of the margins are also found in escape settings. And again, probably due to garden discards, but are now out in natural areas and starting to take over. So you might want to look out 
for this slightly different form as well. I also wanted to point out it's white flowers. Now you're not gonna see that at this time of year, but it's white flowers bloom. They kind of, these shoot, these flowering shoots come straight out and kind of an airy white cluster and these humble like arrangements here at the top. Uh, very similar to Queen Anne's lace. You might confuse it with that. But again, you've got basal leaves here in those, in those clusters as well towards the base and those flowering shoots again, don't come out till the springtime. All right, some other lookalikes and people uh, may confuse it with are another type of invasive ground cover species that we actually had as part of another EcoQuest challenge last winter. And that is yellow archangel. And you can see why the two would be confused. They've got these notches and these serrations on the, on the margins, but yellow archangel, kind of has its leaves that are coming out. And the reason why it's called Archangel is because almost like these angel wings that are appearing on the side here, coming out opposite of one another along the stem. So here's some coming out in pairs there, and then another pair coming out this way and resembling angel wings. Uh, yellow Archangel leaves also tend to be a little bit hairier and have that uh, definitely that white splotching and kind of like a darker base to the middle, as you can see here. So those are some other subtle differences between the two versus um, goutweed, which again comes in pairs of those three leaflets. These are just simply opposite of one another in angel wing like shape. In terms of eye naturalist posting instructions, it's really simple. You're just going to post observations of goutweed under goutweed. Um, and this is its genus name here, just in case you want to doubly confirm while you're out there posting. And of course, if you have any questions, email us at invasives at nynjtc.org. And feel free to subscribe to our Lower Hudson Prism YouTube channel, where a lot of these field ID videos are posted. And you can actually check out that yellow archangel EcoQuest Challenge video as a comparison to this one that you're seeing here, just to see what goutweed is and its differences between some lookalikes. Here's also a look at our Lower Hudson Prism EcoQuest website. We'd love to have you take a part of it. Just want to again say thank you to all our partners and uh, best of luck hunting for this month's EcoQuest Challenge focal species, goutweed. See you out there.